Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Ramble Mania probably brings to you. It is, I, I'm not going to do that long answer anymore. I am your two time first ever inaugural champion singles and the tag team champion division. I am Hazel, the eye zombie. And oh no, wait, I'm doing this alone tonight. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of What Smackdown. We like to give you the good, the bad, and who booked this shit on Friday night Smackdown. Now you were you were too good of a show. You 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 know what? Let's keep you here for a little bit. You were a good show today, indeed, in fucking D. Ladies and gentlemen, after uh, two and a half months of not doing any recordings for Raw Rants. Uh, fucking what SmackDown and all that other stuff. Uh, we all needed a break, and happy that we, you know, we all took the opportunity to, you know, freshen up before we made our returns. And everyone is stoked to see us come back. Uh, hopefully, uh, my twin could be here for for raw next week but technically i'm really more excited for what happened uh a few uh hours ago on friday night smackdown after 70 weeks of after like after nearly 300 and somewhat days of you know going to performance centers, to Thunderdomes, to being in Orlando, to then going to Tampa and all this other stuff. And, you know, it's just so, so moving. It's so exciting to know that after, after all that time that we've had away from a live crowd, they finally make a return here on Friday Night Smackdown. Mind you people, this is the go home show for uh, Money in the Bank. That's this Sunday. So yeah. Um, before I even get into SmackDown, I do want to say a few words. I want to give uh, the Thunderdome a proper eulogy. I want to give it a proper send off since apparently they didn't even WWE just said fuck it. We're not gonna we're not gonna do video packages of us saying goodbye Thunderdome and all that other stuff. So. To the Performance Center and the Thunderdome, who we will always forget. Because holy shit, you made Mondays horrible. And I people could say it's not it's not Booking's fault. It's not uh it's not Vince's fault. Everyone could just say, hey, it's COVID's fault. I mean, yeah, you can blame COVID, but can't blame COVID for everything that WWE did bad, especially on the Mondays. So with everything that you've done within those amount of weeks, from Thunderdome, from having Chris Benoit appear in the Thunderdome, having a, a, a Klansman appear in the Thunderdome, having a, a wild Pikachu appear from out of nowhere in the Thunderdome, and, you know, all the bullshit that they were doing well within – these shows, just constant, constant, constant trash, constant trash. I mean, maybe that's why we didn't record for the, for those uh, months that we were off because the, there was just constant shit here. And the fact that now that like I'm back here recording after watching the show that just had a live fucking crowd, and the crowd just returned and everything else. I'm actually pretty excited to talk about SmackDown. Because, you know, I give Raw a lot of shit. I give Raw a lot of shit for what they do. Let, let me stop. Now. I give WWE a lot of shit for what they put out every week. Whether if it is Raw or SmackDown. And to be honest, I, I, I give SmackDown so much props now for what they're trying to do it. This whole thing with Roman is amazing. Uh, we got new people coming uh, to, to SmackDown also, which a few people, I think like 
one person made made his return to the main roster, which we're going to get to in a minute. But I just enjoyed more or less, besides everything that happened on this Go Home show, I am just actually ecstatic that the crowd is back. There's only one negative that I could say about it. It's just not the SmackDown. It's just in general what I'm like not really digging with what they did here. I despise the fucking Titan Tron. I fucking hate it. It's Mania 35 vibes. It's Hey, you have this 50-inch big screen LCD smart television, right? Well, check out our fucking 1,000-inch TV screen that we're going to be doing on fucking live shows now. Like, that's, it's, it's, oh, God. I don't like it because, okay, there's the, there's that little center square that everyone comes out of, and, and honestly, it just looks like, they're coming out of an asshole. And, I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but yeah, I think most of these guys look like pieces of shit coming out of that asshole stage. So yeah, uh, that's the only negative that I can honestly say about it. I don't like the Titan Tron. I don't like the fact that it's a big ass TV set. It's like we got rid of the th- we got rid of the TV sets in the Thunderdome. For the live crowd, and what do you give us? You give us another fucking TV set for a stage. It's it's not. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I don't I don't I am just I'm not digging it. I'm really not digging it. But who knows? I mean, again, this is the first time. Like the. They're, they said they were going to make some changes. They were going to do some new stuff. So uh, um, another thing that, that they did new on this show is, um, okay, I don't know if I've, I've been watching SmackDown for, for a while now. So there, I, I don't know if there was a little drone flying around, like if it was in a space uh, racing game called Wipeout on the PlayStation. Because that's what the fuck it looked like. With NFL... Um, things you know um there were moments where wrestlers were coming out during their entrances and they just showed this little screen where the crowd is being covered oh and and another great thing also they were look they were like filming all over the arena of smackdown so they just weren't filming on one side they filmed everything so even where the hard camera was you could literally see a good full capacity of people there. It's not just oh everyone's down in the um, in the the floor area and then that whole section is emptied out. It's tarped out. No, it's back to oh this place is selling out. But again, I mean, there was some errors in that numbers. Like Michael Cole kept saying fourteen thousand. Pat McAfee out of nowhere said thirteen thousand. I'm like, where's the other grand? Did they leave? And I kind of noticed it because every time they were zooming in into the live crowd, there were moments where there's an there's an empty seat, 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 there's, an empty seat. <laughs> there's empty seats in certain areas, but not like crazy OD empty seats because they kept like boosting the number of attendants that they were doing uh, for the, for this show. And yes, and it's 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 your first time back after seventy weeks. And you have to keep mentioning how many people are in attendance here on the SmackDown. Yeah, you haven't said it within a year. It's cool, but and it's like come back from commercial. 14,000 people. Oh my McAfee. 14,000 people in attendance. 13. No, it's 14,000. You get it right, McAfee. God damn it. It's just, it's. I'm not going to nitpick all that stuff. It's just, you know, people are excited. Like, yeah, WWE's back on the bro. They're back on the fucking bro. We get to be, we get to, we get to go to the, like fucking full capacity, all these people and all that other shit, pyromania, all that stuff. So submit it to the approval of the Ramble Mania show. This is the tale of WWE fans returning 
Let's fucking ramble. So we get a pre-packaged uh, for opening the show. It shows uh, wrestlers sitting in the rafters where where the live audience just sit at and looking at the stages. Because basically, it's just like we've been missing something for seventy weeks, and that one thing that we've been missing is yeah. So yeah, they missed they missed us. They missed the live crowd. They missed the fans. The WWE universe, and you know. They started showing flashbacks of, you know, all this stuff. Of course, they showed the racist scoop slamming the giant at WrestleMania 3. They showed a lot of other stuff. And again, yes, they were just hyping up the fact that we're back on tour. But more, most importantly, we have a live crowd again, close together, full capacity. No more six feet shit. <laughs> and it, it, it was just great. It, just to open the show like that and you know we start off the show basically with some good old-fashioned six-man tag match players all right so we we open up with roman and his bloodline cut well basically the bloodline being accompanied to the ring by paul Heyman to take on los mysterios of ray and dominic and their tag team partner edge uh, I believe that this is his third match with a live crowd since he made a return to the 2020 Royal Rumble. And yeah, that right there is uh, is cool. And my God, you know, hearing the crowd again for the first time on, on live television on Friday nights, you know, this is this is literally the first time like we're going to hear Roman Reigns is, you know, crowd reaction. And it's just like, where, where is it going to go? Is it going to be all the booze? Is it going to be the cheers? Or is it going to be mixed? Uh, I looked at it as a mixed thing. Um, Jimmy and Jay are already like in the ring waiting for their cousin to, um, to come out to be with them for the match. Um, there were some new features within, um, the show. So when Roman comes out, he can, you know, like he has his little bronze like statue before he was just the, the oh, this thing moves now. It fucking moves. So it's sitting there, it's looking down like it's getting this blow job. And all of a sudden, like the, the music starts amping up and the fucking uh, the VR graphic does the oh, like he just climaxed. And all of a sudden, all this white shower like lighting just like just comes down and i'm like what the fuck am i looking so yes uh mix mixed reaction from the crowd uh, some cheers from the ladies and some booze from the kids and the men and yeah um then we have the mysterious they come out and the edge comes out and then you know the the match takes place mind you this is the very first time that dominic mysterio is actually wrestling in front of a live crowd and you know for someone like him the debut in during the pandemic covid era the uh performance center era thunderdome era, era it, it it turned out pretty good for him because i mean i i thought for a second like ah oh, he's, he's gonna be in a live crowd what if he gets stage fright and all that other stuff no no, not at all here. Um, his first match with a uh, live crowd, holy shit. He actually got his name chanted by 14,000 people. And right there, it's just like, that kid's going to be a star. He is. Um, the match itself was really, really good. Again, this is the go-home show for Money in the Bank, so you have to build up um, the rivalry between these uh, these six uh six guys because edge is facing roman reigns from the universal championship we just found out on smackdown that at the kickoff show why is it in the kickoff show it's, it's dumb just put it on the main card for the smackdown tag team championships los mysterios will be defending it against jimmy and jay the usos because their whole goal is the whole entire bloodline including paul Heyman, wearing a blue suit every friday has to have blue belts 
the Blue Universal Championship, the SmackDown Blue Tag Team Championship. So they're trying they're trying to make this thing. I hope they're not turning into a bunch of crips now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, match is really good. Especially, uh, I mean, I think I'm going to be talking about the crowd a lot here. It's so stupid. Okay, so before the match even starts, I found this to be uh, to be really weird. So before the match uh, starts, we cut back to commercial. Um, Ro- Edge's music was playing the whole time while they're in the ring. So we come back from commercial. Now Roman's music is hitting. Like they just fucking said, oh, uh, we fucked up on that entrance. So let's, t- go, let's go redo that again. Because you can see Paul Heyman just walking around the ring, holding onto the belt like this. And the whole entire bloodline are just outside. Like they just literally came off from the fucking time shot again. What? This is your first time back from the crowd, and already you got the, it. It just it, it felt weird, but yeah. Uh, this is this is literally uh, a good six man tag here. I I loved it. It's good build up for. By the way, the Usos win. Um, they basically what happens is. Oh yeah, so Jimmy basically gets the win. I think he clocks Ray, goes for a roll-up, pins one, two, three, uh, build up for their tag team match coming this Sunday. Can't really say much about it. It was a great six-man tag. I felt as if uh, all six of these guys, you know, showcase what they could do, especially Dominic, because Dom- I'm not going to say Dominic was the, the highlight reel of this match, but uh, he's finally getting a taste of what it feels like wrestling in front of like tens and thousands of people now. And I think he's going to have to start getting used to that. I don't, um, I don't think they would do anything like to destroy his uh, momentum with the crowds try like stick around for your dad for a little while. And then, you know, when it's time for you to go solo, maybe that time will come. I'm just, I was, I was just really excited because I didn't, I didn't think that Dominic would actually stand out and he truly did. He stood out in front of that live crowd and he put on his game face and you know what? Bravo to Dominic. Bravo to him. The like, um, I wouldn't say this was my match of the night, but this was the this was a great way to open up the show. Don't have to start with like some 20 minute promo about family. And, you know, I do this for the family and acknowledgement and acknowledge me and <clears throat> Paul Heyman talking like it's good, but not for something like this. You want to open up with a banger, and this was a good way to open this show up with a huge banger, a six-man tag, not for the ages, but for a huge return for the uh, for the live crowd being there. So we uh, we cut backstage to Edge and the Mysterios They're walking back. They're talking about what happened at the match. Kayla shows up, and she ask Edge about his match versus Roman. Edge says that he wishes he could say that by making Roman tap out like a bitch early. Oh, yeah, because, um, oh, yeah. So before I get to the Kayla stuff, here's what happened. Here's the new stuff that they're doing. So, yeah, there's this fucking small screen, and they show all these flashbacks. Um, when Edge was coming out during his entrance, they showed clips of him doing the cross face with the the bar on the chair to every single person in the bloodline to roman to jimmy to jay um roman actually tapped out the the aftermath of the match you know so it was good to see that build. i mean it's it's not gonna i don't think roman will tap out here i'm they're gonna find some type of way to do this so i'm hoping it turns out good so yeah back to this so let me repeat this again so she asks Edge about his match versus Roman. He says that he wishes that he could say that by making Roman tap out like a bitch earlier would make it easier for Sunday, but it's not going to be the case. He might have to go to a dark place on Sunday, a.k.a. I got to be the heel to beat the heel. So I got to basically cheat and I got to manipulate and I got to find ways to win. And then 
<laughs> this dude, this Seth Rollins motherfucker is doing Bailey stuff because Bailey's gone for nine months. So he has to do the cackling and all that other shit. And he just looks like an American fucking flag. <laughs> the drip god is at it again with <laughs> teasing a taste of things to come because there's a possibility that there's going to be, we're going to have Edge versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. And I would like that because it just looks like a father and son encounterment going on. And it's like, when it comes to Seth Rollins, Edge, you are the father. All right, so Sami Zayn comes out, and we're back to the conspiracy theory stuff again. It's like, oh, don't let anything that's going on distract you right now. Like these live people, like this brand new setting and all this other stuff, because there's been a conspiracy going on against me throughout the entire year. Like, bro, you were the undisputed intercontinental champion. <laughs> I, I think we should, we should have been done with this whole conspiracy thing a uh, long time ago now and moved on to something else. But no, he gets into the ring. He starts, you know, he starts airing his grievances and then justice for Sammy, justice for Sammy, justice for Sammy. And then the return of the fucking prince himself. Prince Finn Balor makes his return to Friday nights, the very first ever Universal Champion. Sami Zayn is just like, all right, you know, great return. But it's kind of that return. He goes for a punch, ducks. And then, you know, Finn Balor just gets all the offense and just goes after Sami Zayn through, uh, through everything. He, he just, he toy, uh, he, does all this like just starts assaulting him and then you know to finish it off coup de gras off the top onto this man's chest so this is probably going to be the rivalry to, to to for Finn Balor's return to Friday nights and look give Sami Zayn something to do you know after having a brutalizing match with Kevin Owens to qualify for the money in the bank did you guys see that last man standing match that man died powerbomb through the announce table, powerbomb, through the table, and then through the fucking ring apron. That's the hardest part of the ring. You're murdering your best friend. I'm surprised he could still even manage to walk after all that. Great way to um, for Finn Balor to, to, to make his return. Um, I was un, was not expecting it. Um, I don't think the guys were expecting it at all because I think I, I I would read the um the our group chats and you know they're they're just like because the next match that takes place like some of the the guys are mad because like they're taking all the good people from us they're taking the good people from our show and putting them on their show it's like just, just give it time. It might just suck to the point where they might go back. <laughs> we have a rematch from last week. Uh, last week, uh, Shotzi and Tegan, uh, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox made their debut on Friday Night SmackDown as a tag team. They had a tag team match against Natty and Tamina. And basically, they won with a roll-up. They won with a, um, supposedly they thought it was a fluke. Now we have this match taking place, and instead of shooting Nerf guns out of that cannon that the uh, from the tank that Shotzi's riding on, they're shooting out T-shirts. Cool. <laughs> I'm I am 100% down with, with what's happening here. Like that's that is legit entertainment and it's fun. And to be honest, I'm actually really digging Shotzi and Knox as a tag team. I I, I don't know if they were a tag team before. Uh, yeah, they were a tag. They were a tag team in NXT for a little while, and then you know they moved on to other things. So seeing seeing them uh, be a team again, I really like it. It's a good way to freshen up the, the women's tag division because I've been giving it a lot of shit. Lately, and I think it's time for 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 a fucking change. So yeah, we have this rematch taking place. 
but the rematch doesn't really matter here. It doesn't uh, like did did anyone care for this? I'm not saying that I did not care for it. The match was okay, but there was not a lot of focus on the match because next to Pat McAfee and next to Michael Cole, we have Zelina Vega and we have Liv Morgan on commentary. And throughout the whole time that this match is taking place, all these two women are doing is bickering at each other. And it's just like, uh, Oh, I'm going to win the money in the bank. Like, no, I'm going to win money in the bank. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. Like, you want to fight about a bitch? <laughs> so Liv Morgan takes off her headset and, you know, they 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 start fighting outside. While Natty is going for a sharpshooter, I believe it was on Tegan Knox. Um, Zelina Vega throws Liv Morgan into the ring. Natty getting distracted with Tegan Knox getting the opening. And with that opening is what cost Natty and Tamina their match, again, from Shotzi and Knox. Shiniest wizard, boom. Uh, it was, I do believe it was a roll-up also. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, it was a roll-up. Another roll-up. Yeah. Um, we got to stop doing that. Live crowd, man. Live fucking crowd. Can't be doing these roll-ups anymore. Got to fucking stop that. <laughs> but... It just, I cannot stand what happened after. Liv Morgan, you know, for, for, for being the most adorable person in the WWE right now, I cannot stand what you just did here. It's basically, ah, move, ah, move, ah, move. Move and like no screaming, no, no screaming. Like you don't need to do that every time you're attacking someone. It's just that's it. You don't have to. Ah! You don't have. You don't got to do that. You don't got to do that. It's just it's not working. It's not working for me. I'm like it's 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 making me think like what did, what did, what did you do? But no, good. You know, good way to tell the story between, you know, these four women because Natty and Tamina are now the final two competitors to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Why did they need to be in this card? They're the fucking tag champs. They don't need to be in this. And that's another thing, too. Like, I know it's every woman for themselves in this ladder match. Like, there's going to be a time where they have to stop what they're doing with this double team and shit and just like, oh, there's a briefcase up there. Fuck you. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I I I I want to see like something good happen with with these guys. I'm hoping this this might go to Liv Morgan. I don't know, but whatever they've been doing with Liv Morgan because everyone thought that Sonya Deville was going to be the, uh, the the next woman to enter herself in the Money in the Bank ladder match because that's what it looked like because it looked like we were going to get a, a, a little angle between Sonya and Liv there for a minute but no, we didn't it was just it, it, was, it just got scrapped and stuff so we have now our SmackDown Women's Championship about to take place between Bianca Belair versus Carmella. Um, last week Bailey got injured, which um there was supposed to be a SmackDown Women's Championship match at Money in the Bank taking place, an I Quit match. They had the whole thing set up, but then the injury was unexpected, and Bailey is out for nine months. So last week, what they did was they had Bianca Belair come out and they had Carmella be the number one contender to face her for the women's championship. And then that's when Liv Morgan made a complete ass of herself in front of the the virtual audience for the final time. Because Sonya was like, if you would just shut up and listen to what I was going to say after, I was going to put you in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And she's just like, oh, I'm in now, man. <laughs> All right, yay! I'm like, that's stupid. So yeah, 
Carmella is replacing, is being taken out of the ladder match and Liv Morgan is taking her place because Carmella is taking Bailey's place in this women's championship match here. I forgot to mute that. Um, give this girl pyro. I'm sick of the non pyro sound. It's stupid. Just give the goddamn girl some pyro. I mean, yeah, she's hot, but give her some fucking pyro, please. Because she has an amazing uh, theme and a good entrance, too. Like, she changed that whole thing. Like, the whole, oh, F.A., all that stuff. Like, yeah, like, it's done. Now she just, she feels like a legit heel with the character that they gave her here. You know, it gives me a reason to boo her. Um... One thing I can say about like what the the new changes that they did here too was um they added more stuff to the uh, entrances. So when Bianca Belair comes out, there's these big puffy lips and all, and then when you hear the whip, like and her hair is basically following the beat of the whip. And I'm like, that's cool. Not Carlito, but it's cool. <laughs> and yeah, the match takes place. Uh, I can't say. I mean, yeah, it was it was a good match. Probably one of Carmella's best matches, especially if someone like Bianca Belair is carrying her over, like making her look good within this match. It's like it's worth a lot here. And you know, Car- Carmella having her history in WWE. You know, she she is a two time Money in the Bank winner. She is a former SmackDown Women's Champion, also. Uh I actually really enjoyed this match. Again, there was nothing wrong with it. The it was just last minute changes because of an injury. And you know what? Since the live crowd is back, why not give them something to to get hyped about? Let's let's do this match. Oh, and congratulations to Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks for winning the SP award. Uh, over the weekend for their match at Mania 37 being in the main event. That was amazing. I think they beat all the other nominees for the WWE uh, category. So yeah, congratulations to those two women. They rightfully deserve uh, that award. And, you know, hopefully they, they, they become even bigger stars in the future. Hope, oh, wow, even better, bigger and better than most of the men in the roster. This was Carmella's best match, honestly. I mean, I, she's had some okay matches, some good matches, but they weren't like, you know, great and stuff. Some of them were, uh, they were there and men and others were just mediocre as fuck. So, I mean, like these, uh, these two actually, you know, put on one hell of a showcasing here. I can't, you know, give Carmella any shit here because she gave it her all, even if it is for the championship, she gave it her all here. Even, you know, this was supposed to be a pay-per-view uh, match. This television match looked felt like a pay-per-view match. Maybe it's because of the crowd. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just talking about the crowd throughout the whole fucking show. Who knows? But I am literally cool with them doing this. Bianca Belair gets the win. She hits Carmella with the KOD, pulls off the pin. You know, great match. Great fucking match. Great women's match for SmackDown. And, you know, hopefully, um, the this hopefully this would, could be the next angle for now since Bailey is gone. They settle with this. They move on. And, you know, they try to make Bianca look strong. Gives Carmella more airtime so that way they won't throw her in catering prison and all that shit. God, I haven't said that in a while. So we cut backstage. We have the Alpha Academy. This was weird to me. Never really talked about the Alpha Academy so much, especially Otis, because literally Otis looks like a New York Yankee player. I mean, like, you know, he had the long hair, he had the beard. He looked like a Red Sox baseball player, like a designated hitter. 
Now he looks like a designated hitter for the New York Yankees with his short ass hair and his clean cut face and his sweaty face. Like, yo, they literally would zoom on this man's face. You could see the sweat just glistening. So the Alpha Academy are backstage as Gable says that they can feel the tension when they enter the room. He says that they're in awe of Otis and he can see Otis getting the win versus Cesaro here tonight. Wait, what? He's facing Cesaro? Wait, huh? Is that for real? That's for real, right? Oh, okay, yeah, that's, hmm. What's going on here? This is ass backwards. All right, let me finish this promo and then we'll talk about it. All right, in, in comes Cesaro. Who, who says he smells bull. Uh, yeah, he smells bullshit. Just like he smelled it last week when he read the names of the people Otis could defeat. Well, Cesaro's name was not on there. But Otis attacks him with a punch to the gut, takes him down, and just goes back zooming on his face. Um, Then we have this match. Uh, Chad Gable, well, Otis with Chad Gable versus Cesaro. The match rings, the, uh, it's underway. Otis, you know, just sends Cesaro to the ropes. Cesaro goes for an uppercut. And out of nowhere, Gable just basically gets on the in- ring apron, distracts Cesaro, and Otis just takes him down with a slam. Otis goes for a splash in the corner, but Cesaro moves out of the way. Gable comes in, deadlift German suplex disqualification. This is ass backwards because we're supposed to be pushing Cesaro forward, not putting him back on the lower end of the card again. Because, I mean, look, Otis and Chad Gable, they're great athletes. They're great wrestlers, good competitors. But they didn't need to be in this. They did not need to be a part of this whatsoever. And the fact that Cesaro had to be a part of this just, just basically says that you're not you're losing faith in Cesaro and not, not completely, but you're starting to lose faith in him. And like, why? He's been doing a really good job. The the problem is, is that you guys just don't want to push him. You guys don't want to push this man to the moon. Not Cameron Grimes type of shit, but still, like he just wrestled Roman for the Universal Championship. Isn't that enough for you to tell yourself that this guy belongs in the main event with all the other people? It's it's completely ass backwards what they did here. It's like, oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna give Cesaro, you know, this 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 top level status. Cause you know if you if you work with the top top guy, you get top top pay. And I think that's just what they did there for a redacted backlash and that, that I was just like they didn't bring it up anymore. He loses the quali- the the qualifying match for the Money in the Bank against Seth Rollins in a great match last week, where there was color. Um, I was just disappointed that they literally did not pull the trigger on giving Cesaro the the Money in the Bank ladder match, you know, spot, and they gave it to Rollins because I was really hoping that they do that, and then he wins the Money in the Bank briefcase and then cashes it in. Because I thought that's literally what they were gonna do. I didn't think that like, oh, they would they would possibly say, hey, you got one more one on one match, pow. I mean, yeah. Oh, hey, a while Vince McMahon showed up at the beginning of the show and he basically asked us, where the hell we been? Where the hell we been, pal? Um, we've been sitting at home because there was this thing called COVID. Paul Heyman, he is about to, uh, he's cutting a promo with Kayla, and she mentions Edge. Paul Heyman cuts her off. Says Edge sin tonight against the tribal chief who will confess in a tomb for those sins. He says Edge will have those sins beaten out of him at Money in the Bank. And he tells her that it's not a prediction, but it's all. 
don't you dare be blah, 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 all that other nonsense. And here comes the former king of the herd. Thank you. Oh, no, wait, he doesn't have any either. <laughs> he has nothing. He had his G-Wagon repossessed. He lost his crown to Nakamura. He, he's about to lose his home because the bank keeps calling. He lost his jewelry. He lost his knights at the Lone Wolf. He lost it all. So Baron Corbin he comes out and, you know, he's down in the dumps. He's literally just like, he's down on his luck. He's literally, the man is down on his luck. And, you know, some of us, well, all of us, can't say some of us. All of us have been in this type of position before where we have been down on our lucks and we've all asked for a little help or two. Okay. This motherfucker did a go for me. A <laughs> hundred grand to get this man back on his feet. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to be on drugs for this. I, Baron Corbin, am begging the WWE Universe from the bottom of my heart. Donate anything to my Corbin Fund Me page. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, bro, you're getting a sweet paycheck out of this segment later on. What the fuck are you doing? Kevin Owens shows up. And look, mind you, Corbin is literally still on his knees. I'm like, Vince McMahon should have showed up at that moment and just dropped his big old trial and showed Corbin the big old moon and ah, 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 the resurrection of the Vince McMahon. Kiss my ass, club pal. Pucker up, constable bitch. <laughs> no, so Kevin Owens is in the ring. Corbin is just like, he's frowning. He's, he's drowning in despair right now. It's like he has nothing to do. So he's like, Kevin, if you could find it in your heart and he puts his hand on Kevin Owens' heart and Kevin is like, is this man touching me? Is this former king? Stunner! And then the fatal, our main event takes place, which is the fatal four-way. All four men basically who qualified for the Money in the Bank men, men's ladder match. Kevin Owens versus Big E versus Seth Rollins, versus the King of Strong Style, King Ske Nakamura with Mr. Rick Boogs. Yo, that man can rock. He's like, <laughs> like, yo, Tanahashi got nothing on him, bro. <laughs> okay, so Max takes place, and it's Spamamania. It's... This match was this was my match of the night indeed, but this match was finisher mania right here. It's just we're running out of time. We gotta get we just gotta get to the point. Everyone was just basically doing big moves after big move after big move after big move after big move, and then elbow drop onto the table. And I'm like, wait a minute, why is Seth holding on to the ladder for Kevin Owens? Shouldn't Seth be the one thing on this table instead of Nakamura? Where the fuck is Big E in this whole scenario? And again, it was it's just one crazy thing after another with these uh these four teams. Uh, why did I say teams? These four guys in, in this ring. And basically what happens is like several after the ladder spot from Kevin Owens onto Nakamura, elbow drop onto the table. Seth Rollins runs into the ring, gives Big E the curb stomp, goes for the cover, one, two, three, and he wins. After the match, he goes and grabs a ladder. He climbs up, and he unhooks the briefcase, and he holds on to it. And he's just, like, teasing that this could possibly happen this Sunday at Money in the Bank. You just don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. And ladies and gentlemen, that right there is what smacked down. Overall, the show was basically uh, 
it was a show of it, it was a, it was a show of excellence that they had here, and I think there was practically nothing wrong with well the entire show. Again, the only thing that I could hate is the fucking Titan Tron. That's really it. Oh, and Liv Morgan. Ah! 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 No, stop that. That that's not it's it's not pretty. Like everything else, like all the matches, they 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 exceeded my expectations. I loved all the matches here, especially the crowd made the matches feel very special because again, we will never remember the Thunderdome slash performance center slash hey, we got 2K audio sounds here. Let's play that. No, we got real people now, so you can't lower the fucking volume anymore. I love this show. The first ever show to have fans back after all these years, um, not after all these years, after literally 70 weeks. It's been a crazy, crazy 2020 going into, you know, half of 2021. Now we just need to see where the other half of this year takes us. This show, I can honestly say it gets literally the highest of bars, a 4.5. I got to see the ratings for this show um, in the next couple of days and see um, how good the ratings went with the live crowd being there and all of this stuff. Now... Uh, again, we're not gonna um, we're not gonna be doing going back to the drawing board where it's me talking, me me just being alone recording again. Twin just couldn't be here this week. He's just dealing he's dealing with a lot of stuff with his job and everything. So he will be back for raw rants next week. But you can follow all of our platforms from YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Ramble Mania Show. You could subscribe, hit, click a mud hole on that subscribe button, share for us with a thumbs up. Every week we put out videos, Banter Club, Twin Magic for Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and AEW, because every week we put out videos for you to watch and enjoy. For all of our social media is Facebook.com forward slash Ramble Mania Show. Twitter at Ramble Mania, Instagram at Ramble Mania Show. For all of our audio platforms, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, Stitcher, any single audio podcast you listen to, just search Ramble Mania Show because every week we put out all the audio pro wrestling for all of you to listen and enjoy. And as for me personally, you can follow me on Instagram at iZombies, double I Z O M B double I E. S Z feels good to be back doing this shit again. Can't wait to get back doing this more. Get angry for every time they put on a fucking shitty raw. So for your two-time inaugural champion, I am Hazel the Eye Zombie. Wishing you all a point and goodies, a too sweet, a good fight, a goodbye. And a good night. Bang!